Welcome as we gather for prayer and as we celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation. Our opening hymn can be found in your music issue number 456, Come Holy Ghost. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have felt to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. According to Luke, Glory to you, Lord. when a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. And he answered, the seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard. But the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in time of temptation. And as for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they heard the word, embraced it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Archbishop Vito, the parish family of Our Lady of Hope, ask you to confer upon these candidates the gift of the Holy Spirit through the sacrament of confirmation. I ask those who are to be, who present themselves for this sacrament to please stand. Holy Mother Church asks that its members be suitably prepared for confirmation so that they may freely and knowingly accept the Holy Spirit. Have these candidates were instructed thoroughly? Bishop Vito, I testify that they have joined with their parents and teachers in our parish preparation programs. They have participated in Christian service projects and have been interviewed and questioned about their faith. They are ready to open their hearts to the Spirit. My dear parents and guardians and sponsors, your sons and daughters have been accepted for confirmation. Do you promise to help them grow in the grace of this sacrament? Yes, Bishop. My dear sons and daughters, do you understand and accept the Holy Spirit into your lives? Do you know that this sacrament is not only for your personal growth, but to aid the parish and the entire church? Are you ready to accept the graces and responsibilities that confirmation brings? Jesus Christ and his church, I accept these candidates and pray that the grace and gifts you are to receive will strengthen your faith and assist the growth of the kingdom of God on his earth. You are accepted to the sacrament of confirmation. Please be seated. My dear young friends, you are all standing in this beautiful church today to open your hearts to the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if God didn't look into your heart, you wouldn't be sitting in these pews. God sees in each of you what your parents do not. God sees in you what your teachers do not. God sees in you everything that you yourselves do not. God knows that you are all able to surrender to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us and descends with all his power unto each of us. He unites us in the communion of the Holy Church. This Spirit is the greatest gift you ever receive. Let's look around and see who, that, who gathered in our parish church today. First of all, the candidates for confirmation came to this sacramental ceremony. However, they are not here alone. Next to them, there are the sponsors of this sacrament. The closest family members, their parents, their siblings, there are godparents, there are cousins, as well as friends. We all know that you are the greatest and most precious gift and treasure.
pleasure for your parents. They were the ones who were most happy when you were born. They fed you and clothed you, taught you basic behavior, and gave you an example of Christian through faith and Christian life. Most of all, they shared their faith with you as their parents, your grandparents passed unto them. Today, they remind and show that the church lasts because the Holy Spirit is always present and active in her. This spirit made the 12 apostles, ordinary and simple people, sent into the world, make others seeing them and hearing to the teaching of Jesus convert. This happened because the Holy Spirit was with the apostles. The church survived and developed because martyrs died for the teachings of Christ Jesus. Kingdoms and empires fell and the church based on the teachings of the apostles and the martyrdom of Christians continues. A special role in this church was played by insignificant people who are not written about in the newspapers or heard about in the news. They are also among us. They are members of Christian families. Those who transmit the faith, a gift and a task. In a Christian family, the following are important. The sacraments of the church. The first and most important sacrament is baptism. Then there is a reconciliation, confession. Receiving the Holy Eucharist, teaching prayer, going to church, religious education classes, admonition, the sacrament of confirmation, receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It happens today, at this place. It happens with you and in you. The fact that you are here is not tradition. Christ is not tradition, folklore or custom. He is not human creature, culture created by men. We know Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We live in him. We move with, in him and with him. That's why you are here, to deepen your faith. You said you would defend your faith. You would live by it. You will help the church, the local church, and the entire church. At your baptism, the priest or deacon asked, do you believe? Then this question was answered by your parents and God and godparents. Today, you will answer for yourself. You will confess your faith with power, with confidence. Once again, you will face the question, do you renounce Satan? The answer must be, I do. Remember that you are free beings. God created everyone to have a free will. He has allowed us to go against him. He has allowed us to choose. You will have to choose and try to make that choices a good one. You have to learn to choose. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, these seven gifts will help you to make good choices. 
the choice, the choices for life. You know them. You have learned about their power, their operation. The gifts of fortitude and counsel deserve special attention. This courage and right judgment is what you need most today. You have plans and dreams ahead of you. You want to be happy. You have a lot of possibilities. That's why you can be great people. You have amazing abilities. You are gifted, talented. So you need to recognize and work on all this and develop properly. You know that without working on yourself, there will be no result. Make good use of the time of youth, which will not come back. We have a lot to learn to live up to our age. One must not stray from moral principles, from God, from his commandments. It is so important, so valuable. We have to be the people of faith laid, led by the Holy Spirit and led by the gifts of the Spirit. Knowledge and le learning alone are not enough. It takes faith and good manners. Regarding the Decalogue, someone very aptly said, God's Ten Commandments are something like a traffic code. If it wasn't for this code, we would run over each other on the roads and possibly kill each other. The Lord God gave us such a code in the commandments so that we do not derail in life. May the power of the Holy Spirit, may the gifts of the Spirit lead you to produce noble fruits of faith, those fruits that the Gospel said of, in the form of good deeds and radiate the life of the Spirit living in each of you, which God sent to teach and to remind you of his words. I would ask those who will be to confirmed to please stand. Reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do. do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now I would ask those who will be to confirm to please kneel and the other members of the congregation to please stand. We can pray for them. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for this his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, 
conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. <coughs> Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought this your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please arise. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God, the Almighty Father, and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from, the, from, from His Holy Spirit, are one. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For these, His servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, and all the bishops, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our teachers and catechists who have journeyed with us this year, that the Spirit will continue to guide them in their efforts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have one Maker and Father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and will that through them and their successors, the same Spirit handed on the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the, the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. come for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring it to the fullness of charity to give Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord have my roof, my soul shall be.
community hymnus number 336, Panda Vida, Bread of Life.
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works of the, and their charity foster the, her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Bishop Vito, on behalf of the parish community of Our Lady of Hope, we offer our sincere appreciation for your presence today. For one of the most important days of the year as we celebrate the sacrament of confirmation for our young children. We're grateful for the little bit of extra time you took with each of them to get to know them and to uh, produce a little bit of a smile on their face. So it was very nice, uh, not only your presence, but the way in which you interacted with our children. We take the opportunity, obviously, to congratulate our sons, our daughters, our children, as well as all the families uh, that have accompanied them and brought them here. But it's also the opportunity for us to thank all those who made today possible uh, by preparing uh, the boys and girls throughout the year and preparing them for today. So special word of thanks to Mrs. Coletti, who runs our Religious Ed program. <laughs> she works so hard with our program all year, and particularly this time of year, to prepare our young people for the first sacraments. So along with her assistant, uh, Lucy Carasetti, and the uh, Religious Ed instructors, Mr. Zalak, and uh, Ms. Nolan, we're very grateful for your hard work throughout the year, as well as uh, the teachers and administration from Our Lady of Hope Catholic Academy, Mr. Campella, and our eighth grade teachers, uh, Ms. Honan, uh, Ms. Hoffman, and Senora Seron, uh, and all other uh, faculty members and, and teachers who are with us today. A word of thanks, as always, to the hard work and to the presence of our clergy, for uh, Father Grandy and Deacon Bob and Deacon Paul. Special word of thanks today uh, to our servers. Three of our servers did double duty. They served at the 11 and at the, tw and at the 2 o'clock. They will accept tips if, any <laughs> if, if, if anyone is offering. Uh, and to our music ministry as well, uh, that always enhance our celebrations. To Larry and to Susan, thank you uh, very much. Boys and girls, I just offer, offer, offer my own word of encouragement as today you celebrate uh, the sacrament of, of confirmation. Um, we heard about, in the gospel, the, the sower that goes out to sow. And that's an image of Christ himself who showers his blessings upon us so generously. But as we hear uh, in that gospel, it's up to us to become fertile soil, to receive those gifts and to produce fruit. I had a horrible experience yesterday morning. I came down to the kitchen in the morning. I put a cake up in the curry hit for the big cup of coffee, I went over to the fridge, I was looking for a yogurt, I could smell the coffee, but I forgot to put the cup underneath. <laughs> you know, and sometimes things like that happen, but isn't that maybe an image of sometimes we do what we do with God's blessing? God is looking to bestow and to shower his blessings upon us, but maybe we're not open to receiving them. So we hope that the blessings which God has given you today, you receive with grateful hearts and to use them wisely for the betterment of yourselves and of our community. So family and friends, we hope you have a wonderful day and have an opportunity today to celebrate. Thank you, everyone. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Confirm, O God, what you have brought about in us, and preserve in the hearts of your faithful the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May they never be ashamed to confess Christ crucified before the world, and by devoted charity, may they ever fulfill his commands, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth, the Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing hymn number 424, One Spirit, One Church.
afterwards, we will invite the children up one by one with their sponsors to take photos with the bishop. We ask that families please begin to come to the front so you could jump in for photos. We could try to do it as efficiently as possible with the children in the front and then working back.